Hey there folks, Santee at the Arizona Ghost Riders here. Myth versus reality, gunshot wounds. That's gonna leave a mark. Roll of film. I'd say a 36 caliber, am I right? Oh, I didn't get a good look at it on the way in. If you've watched a lot of westerns, you may have an unrealistic view of the bullet wounds and how they were treated in the Old West. Many guns in the 19th century shot large diameter bullets. A 44 or 45 caliber lead slug traveling at 900 feet per second would do serious damage to the flesh and bone it comes into contact with. Hollywood seems to think that the shoulder area of the human body is a safe zone, when in fact, it contains three bones, four joints, eight muscles, and a bunch of arteries that if punctured, could end your life. Not to mention that the softer lead would bounce around in there, causing even more injury. Taking a red hot iron to the flesh to cauterize the wound would certainly stop blood flow, but then you have a serious burn to contend with that will likely get infected. Pouring gunpowder in and setting it on fire may seem quicker, but the threat of infection is still there. Get it, just get it. Whoa, look at that. <sighs> Souvenir? Thanks. Could you just sew it up? Could you sew it up, please? Please sew it up. I got a better idea. No, 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 no! Ah! The Wild West is also represented as having one doctor in every town. That physician could be the dentist, the barber, and the veterinarian. Although this is no doubt the case in some of the rural settlements, the bigger towns had more variety. For instance, Tombstone in 1881 had 11 doctors. Only a few of them actually had medical school diplomas. The most famous of them was Dr. George Goodfellow, who is known today as the gunfighter's surgeon. You think what it would mean if I could talk to the animals. Just imagine it. George, also a coroner, was deeply interested in different methods of repairing tissue damage made by bullets. He was not afraid to break the bonds of what his peers thought on the subject and was frequently successful. Due to the uncanny skill and wisdom of his personal physician, the stubborn and ornery United States Marshal is going to recover. <laughs> Goodfellow was eventually regarded as the nation's leading expert on abdominal gunshot wounds. He sang the praises of cleanliness and antiseptics in the operating room. If you happen to be lucky enough to recover from being shot in the guts, it was a lengthy ordeal and you likely suffered the effects for the rest of your life. Unless, of course, you have a Hollywood actor as your doctor and repairs it so well that you can ride a horse the next day. We'll take our chances. Frontier doctors are usually represented as old throwbacks to the Civil War, where amputation was a commonplace remedy for bullet wounds. Remember that these battlefield surgeons were seeing dozens of patients in an emergency room setting, and long-involved surgeries repairing tissue and bone were just not possible. Some of them, who moved on to practice after the war, implemented emerging techniques, so getting shot in the arm didn't always mean you were going to lose it. On July 2, 1881, President James Garfield was shot by an assassin. Although many doctors treated him, there is a belief that they probed the site with little to no antiseptic. You're not gonna cut on me with that, are you? Well, you want the bullet out, don't you? If you're gonna use that filthy blade, you might as well leave the bullet in. They also were unable to remove the bullet, and two months later, the president died from infection. Now, sterilizing equipment and the use of antiseptics was practiced at the time, but the nation's commander-in-chief may not have gotten that benefit. Perhaps if Dr. Goodfellow had been there, the outcome would have been different. Well, the bullet stopped between the layers of pleura. I mean, it's, well, it's lodged against the inside surface of the rib. So, are we willing to suspend disbelief while watching our seriously wounded hero save the day? I am. Frankly, there are other things that upset me more while watching a Western. 
All right, Cage. The next one's headed for your hat. Well, folks, that's it for another episode. Thanks for watching. This week on Patreon, we're talking about the death of a stuntman. Yeah, from a guy who was there. Check it out. It's only $3 a month. And as always, please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you on down the trail. And as always, please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see...